Good morning, Singapore, and welcome to Therapy Tuesday with Dr. Geraldine Tan from the Therapy Room. Good morning, Jerry. Morning. And I have to say this, every week I wanted to tell FD this, I really What? love how you deliver the, the traffic news oh. and how you always end it with a smile. You know, you always say, have everyone buckled up, be safe as you drive today. And you have that smile right at the end. I'll be like, <laughs> So happy to buckle up and be safe. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jerry. <laughs> that's thank why. You. That's why he's the traffic CEO. In the whole yeah. of Singapore, all the radio stations, he is the traffic CEO. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I would. Oh, I would gift him this. He, he deserves it. <laughs> thank no, you. Nobody so much. does traffic news like the Flying Dutchman. I know. He's so serious one minute, and then after that, he ends with a smile. So nice. <laughs> But of course, when we, uh, after we introduce, you know, the the gadgets, the new gadgets that we need to put in our cars and all that, yeah. which will give traffic information, yeah. then he will become redundant. I, I still say, <laughs> no, I still he say, won't, Glenn. no, he no, won't. he won't. He won't. He won't. I have a fan in Jerry. I have a fan in Jerry. <laughs> you can't take. You can't replicate his smile. There, yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Good job. That's why. That's why Jerry is uh, such a good psychologist. You see, because she's so Aww. positive. She's so positive. Yes. You know, and and puts a smile about on our faces every Tuesday. That's why we have chosen Jerry. Jerry is the oh, chosen one. Chosen. I'm the chosen one. Yes. Yeah, so, There's so many psychologists out there, but Jerry is the best. Thank you very much, Jerry, once again for joining us. Uh, you know, every Tuesday. Now, um, October, I understand, is Mental Health Month, so there are, there are many things uh, uh, associated with mental health. So, what are we talking about today? It's Mental Health Awareness Month. Okay. Mental oh, health. what did I say? Huh? You said health Mental Health Month. month. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I mean Mental Health Awareness Month. <laughs> yeah, it is okay. I'm just teasing you. Both are okay. Okay. Yeah. So I thought I'm going to do something different, and I had I disturbed you know uh, Sean over the weekend. He needed his weekend, but I just had to disturb him, and I say, okay, let's do a disorder and something that we can do for ourselves each week, okay. and we'll tie up on the last week whether we've done it or not. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I haven't forgotten that every time I give you your homework, you all never do, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Sweet Daisy, <laughs> yeah, boys. What was the What was the last assignment? I can't even remember. Yeah, It's okay. The very first one was declutter your phone. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah we did yeah. that. We did that. We got rid of so many apps. What? Yeah, Glenn got rid of two apps. <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So today we're going to look at uh, anxiety, and we're going to look at how to motivate ourselves. Okay, hold that thought, Jerry. Uh, for the rest of you, if you're watching us live on Facebook, we will continue this discussion. Okay, for the rest of you who do not have access to Facebook right now, you can watch it any time after uh, the program is over. All right. Uh, in the meantime, here's Bachelor Girl with buses and trains. Therapy Tuesday with Dr. Geraldine Tan from the Therapy Room right here on One FM ninety one point three. Hey, mom. So, Jerry, uh, yes. Mental Awareness Month, we're talking about anxiety and how to motivate ourselves. What is, uh, how do you explain ex anxiety disorder? Anxiety disorder, when it becomes a disorder, there are many different things parked underneath. Mm. Um, So some of it is like separation anxiety. So have you heard of this one? Separation I have, yes. Yep. Parents often experience that with their children. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite sad to witness it because the, the child really just screams and it's so heartbreaking. So separation anxiety is one. There is selective mutism that comes under this category also. So they, the the person doesn't speak or cannot speak in certain situations but may be able to speak with the family or with someone that is very very close mm. um, and there's all the different phobias you know and i had to experience one myself with my little boy having to take his blood test phobia mm. of need not needles just having the blood taken oh. yeah Yeah, and it's so difficult. I, I, I really thank the doctors for helping me with that. But, you know, that's even difficult for adults. Yeah. You know, yeah. some adults, uh, they, they, you know, they really hate needles. 
It was one time I went down for a blood test and the nurse mm. was uh, was asking me all these questions to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm not afraid of needles. I'm like, nah, I'm fine. You know, just go ahead, you know. Mm. But but she says there are many, many people who have panic attacks even. Yep. So, yeah, it's a uh, very real fear for... Later many. on, we'll talk about panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Yeah, oh. so that comes under it. So panic attack comes under that big Bible I was telling you about. But mm-hmm. anxiety attack doesn't come into that big book. Oh, yeah. I always thought it was the same thing, a panic attack and an anxiety attack. It's different. Nope, nope. nope. One made it to the books and the other didn't. Wow. <laughs> so does OCD comes under, uh, or is it under the anxiety disorder as well? It is a category by, by itself. Yeah. Okay. OCD is a category by itself. Yeah. But it can come com- a bit with a lot of anxiety. Mm. Mm, yes. And of course, the other one is the one that we are quite familiar with, generalized anxiety disorder. So, you know, being afraid of many different things. Okay. Jerry, let me mm-hmm. ask you something. Something that uh, I feel uh, my wife and I just went through. Um Empty nest syndrome. Okay. Is that okay. part is that part of separation anxiety? Uh it can lead into depressiveness. Mm. Mm. Uh it might not be so much of anxiety unless there are other worries that you uh that surfaces. Mm. Mm, the anxiety separation anxiety needs to be more extensive, pervasive. Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Funny, okay. right? I can never understand that, you know, this uh, empty nest syndrome. I feel like if I'm a parent and I've supported my kids all their lives, you know, at that mm. point when they leave, you know, the house, right? I am just going to have a great time with my wife, man. No. <laughs> we'll just do everything house, and anything. Your house is completely empty. Yeah, but this is just you, lah, because I, I refuse to believe that everybody, every mm. parent, no, uh, no, it does. I don't all think... parents, so this is just you. I'm sure there are many, many parents who can't wait for the kids to get out of the house. True. <laughs> <laughs> different levels, lah. Different, different levels, levels yeah. Mm. Different, different personality and different focus, I suppose. I, I mean, if you have your par- uh, if a parent is you know has centered their lives around the children the the emptiness syndrome is more is is yeah. definitely more severe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it mm. can get it can, it can get very very tough okay very so what's tough. the lesson here to not center yourself around your children oh you can't do oh, that you can't do that, see, you can't okay. do that. different personalities yeah. once again <laughs> i'll just i'll just tell you this glenn you yeah. also you know so close with your dogs right okay am i yeah so if if I tell you, don't be too close to your dogs. Can or not? Can. can. Right? Because, no, you know why? Because I've I've decided now that uh, you know I don't want to be too close. So half of the week, right? He is with my father-in-law. Is that even in the same house? <laughs> yeah. So yesterday I was like, you know, I was I was looking at him and he was a bit bored. I'm like, want to go to grandpa's? What? He's like, Whoa. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm gonna drive you over there. So uh, so yeah. <laughs> so Jerry, how do we recognize an anxiety disorder? Are, are, are there specific signs and symptoms that we look for? Okay, so the different ones, um, I, I, I'm only going to focus on GAD. So you have the restlessness, you have the exhaustion, that real fatigue that you feel. Um, if someone is working or studying, they cannot focus, they find it very difficult to focus. Irritability. Um, a lot of tension because when you're anxious, a lot of tension is going on in the body. Uh, they can't, they have a lot of sleep disturbances, whether they can fall to sleep, whether they wake up every hour. So these are the few very general things that uh, they tend to complain about. Of course, every individual has different um, signs and symptoms. Mm. Some of them stomach ache. <laughs> really? Yep. Ivan? Yeah, so... With the exams right now, uh, you know, you definitely see a lot of children or even teens with anxiety level. Am I right to say that? Yep, yep, yep. So you have those that have nausea. They they just wake up and they feel sick. They will tell their parents, I feel sick. I want to vomit. Uh, But nothing comes up because it's early in the morning. 
or they run to the toilet like many many times just before the paper mm. you know yeah they have cramping um all all uh, physiological manifestations okay mm. hold on we're going back on air Phil Collins, Two Hearts, right here on 1FM 91.3, Good Times, Greatest Hits. We are live on Facebook as well. It is Therapy Tuesday, and so that's why we have the lovely Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. And today, uh, we are talking about uh, various types of uh, anxiety because yes. it is Mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah. Um, and so we were talking about the difference between uh, a panic attack and an anxiety attack. attack. I always thought it was the same thing. No, it's not. And, and we're trying to figure out the symptoms uh, and the signs to look out for. Uh, Jerry, you were saying things like going to the toilet a lot before before a paper, getting cramps. Uh, but, you know, as parents, sometimes we see this and we go, okay, never, he's just nervous. He's just worried. Uh, it, it's no big deal. At what yep. point do we need to stop and go, okay, no, something needs to be done here? When the person faints, I think. <laughs> No, <laughs> you always wait for the, the worst actually, to happen. Actually, for the children, they are far more adaptable and very resilient. Mm. You know, so a kind, uh, you know, word will help. Don't go, why are you always stomach ache? Uh, that one, you know, mm, okay, maybe we can do away with that sort of comments. Mm. Uh, or, you know, just a warm drink would help them mm. i tend to go with warm drinks because cold drinks tend to create more tension because you know it's cold um yeah a, a, a hug the children just need a hug it's so funny right it's the same thing for adults as well you see the children need a drink adults need a drink as well a whiskey shot yeah and then after that <laughs> you know a hug will also help yeah <laughs> no, but no, but but Jerry, I'm trying to figure out that if, if I have a child who goes through these nervous bouts, at what point do I start to worry and say maybe I need to seek treatment? Um. When okay, so if your your child starts to feel um or displaced, like really paralysis, that means I can't go to school, I can't go to school, and just repeating that or mm -hmm. starting feel very anxious mm. uh, that would be an indicator so I don't want to hang out with my friends anymore um, uh, I, I stop playing my computer games I stop uh, watching TV I stop doing a lot of things they, they start to withdraw from many activities that they are excited about or interested about ah. Okay, so, so, so Jerry, can I just check with you, Jerry? Are there different levels of anxiety when you see any of your patients? Do you, you know, uh, actually look at it and say, oh, okay, you're mild, you're moderate, you're severe? Mm -hmm. So we don't generally kind of categorize them, but through the, the interviews or through therapy, we can see whether they are, how severe they are. So those that are the most severe, I always say, please see the psychiatrist to get some medication because mm. um, the chemicals are far too imbalanced and there's no entry point for the psychologist to work with someone. You know, so if they're all called up and they go, I can't do anything and they, they kind of uh, um, just throw away everything that anyone is doing for them, then they they need some uh, extra help, some chemical help. Mm. Yeah. We are talking to Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room right here on 1FM 91.3. And, uh, well, October, just in case you didn't know, is Mental Health Awareness Month. It is 8.15. 1FM Time Check. Bye. -bye. All right. So there will be times when someone will need to see a psychiatrist first before they see a psychologist to deal with I thought anxiety. Was, I thought it was the other way around. Correct? Either way. Either way. So if the psychiatrist feels that, you know, mm. the, the symptoms are a bit milder, can be managed with therapy, they will just uh, refer over. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. If the, the patient says, oh, doc, but I don't want medication, then they will refer over. Okay, okay. Hmm. 
So what kind of treatments are there that you guys can do to help people with anxiety disorders? What, what do you do with them? There are different ones. So um, the, the CBT, so talk therapy and a variety of theories that we use. CBT is the most commonly used one, cognitive behavioral therapy. Of course, there are others. Um, the children love play and sand play therapy. So they get their hands like dirty with the sand. No, they don't get their hands dirty, but <laughs> <laughs> they, they play with the toys and they are uh, through that, you know, they work through their emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, art therapy is another one. Mm. So, well, yeah. art therapy is what? You, 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 you draw whatever you want to draw or do you draw what is worrying you? Uh, it could be what is worrying you if you can kind of crystallize it in, in a symbol. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. The art therapists have guiding questions to talk you through the entire hour. Wow. I think Ivan and myself may be thinking the same thing, you know, which is why... You know, I mean, I'm looking mm -hmm. at his reaction and yeah. I feel the same way. I feel, I feel, uh, I, I'm very surprised that so many children need therapy. Yeah. Because, I mean, when, when I think about us, I think Ivan is probably the same thing and, and yeah. you as well, FD. When we were kids, we never, yep. we never knew what anxiety was. You know uh, what I mean? We were just uh, wa I, young and, and, and free. I beg to differ. I beg uh, to okay, differ. Okay, you're in a different... Uh, because in my day, yeah, um, we, and, and I, I, I'm sure Jerry knows, has read about it. I'm sure you guys have read about it. We yeah. had a spate of what was known as Saligi House Jumps. What is that? These yeah. were kids who would kill themselves. How old, how, uh, how long ago was this? This was when I was taking my PSLE and when I was in early early secondary school. I've never heard about this. Yeah. Um, kids, kids, kids would jump off uh, blocks in Saligi Road. They were, they were so distressed um, because with exam results, with family problems, with whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, was a, it was a known fact. Uh, we didn't have... Or at least maybe people didn't know that we had people like Jerry that their children could go to, uh, and and yeah, we had we had child suicides here. Yeah, I mean, so we, there we will always have yeah, cases there. like that. But I'm talking about you personally because you you were never anxious as a child, right, Ivan? No, I was never because I think. The key thing is to actually go out there and have fun and enjoy yourself. Yeah, you know swim in the little long gang or climb trees and right. just go and pluck fruits when when we were young we just mm. there's so much outdoor activity and you know we didn't really think too much Same. about the books i would time. i would love to go back to my childhood because i think i i had a wonderful childhood happiest yep. time of my life so which is why i was trying to get it out of of fd i i thought fd was also young and free at that time i, I would was, love i, was, I would love no. to talk to someone uh who who was when, in that, that state of mind you see yeah. to to ask yeah. that person why you know at that age at that young age why were you so stressed out why were you so anxious well you think about it you think about you think about children today and you've heard me say this so many yeah. times glenn children today do not have time to be children because you've got you. school you've got tuition you've got e cca you've got eca yeah. you've got everything except time to be a child but you see we had time to be children no, i know but you see everyone is in that in that just like during our time right during our yeah. time all of us were under you know relatively uh, the same kind of pressure i'm talking about in terms of school you know yeah. what what you just mm. uh, uh described you know but not everyone uh uh was anxious but there will always be some people who will be more stressed out than others. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. just like you're mentioning now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, because uh, they don't have time to be kids, be kids and all that. But but there are other people who are coping okay. You know what Dr. I mean? So Jerry, you, you can't, you because it, it sounds like people are always blaming the system, you see. But okay. if that's the system, you've got to live with the system. Jerry, what's your take? <laughs> poor thing, poor Glenn gets cut off by his own team. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll go on forever. <laughs> well, 
I, we can I, we can I come mean, back I, and yeah. answer that. Let, let's come okay, back okay. and see what Jerry's okay. got to say about okay. it. Back on air, stand by. Great track, Shallow right here on 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. And in case you didn't know, Lady Gaga is taken to rock climbing. Oh. She's a pretty she, good rock climber. Does though. she do it with the platforms and heels? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, she does not. She does not. And she doesn't do like indoor her. rock climbing, no. She climbs outdoors. But Good for her. Well go done. Go check out her Instagram. Wow. Mm. So we were talking about this, how Glenn said in our day, we were still under pressure, but we, we didn't seem to see so many kids needing help. He says today there are kids uh, who are under pressure. Actually, yo, seem- you said that. You said, not me. <laughs> you said, you said that, that these days kids don't have time to, no. to be themselves and all if that. You, and if you let me finish, then you'll understand. Yeah, right. ah, okay. with this. Don't make me fight. Uh, no, no. Tell you. So, so Glenn was saying that we have a group of kids today who are, who are pressurized and who seem to be able to handle it. But we seem to have a lot of kids who need help. In our day, that was not the case. Mm. Jerry, why is this? Um, I, I think the, the answer is very simple, where in the past there were activities that were not graded. So the children, or when we were children, we could play, we could climb trees, um, we could pluck the fruits um, and, and just eat them. And it's not graded, there's no grading system. You can climb into the longkang, you catch fish, you catch fish. You catch that pool, you catch that pool. It really doesn't matter. But in this day and age, the children nowadays go for plenty of classes. But if I ask you, all these classes, if we look carefully, are all graded. You go for guitar class, level one, level two. Piano class, grade one, grade two. Taekwondo, all of them have grading. So they they can say, oh, but my children have a lot of activities. They actually choose it. But everything has an examination and a grading point that is tacked to it. So how can they not feel stress if every single direction they turn, there is a point, mm. there is a grade that they need to achieve. So yep. one of the things where there are spaces where we can explore our creativity with, with no need to fear of failure. Yeah, but you see, I, I was confused because of what FD mentioned earlier when he was talking about the Saligi uh, house. Saligi house. This was like in the what, 60s? 60s, 70s. Yeah. 60s, there were still, you know, people jumping out of the buildings yeah. and all that. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what that was all about yeah. because uh, it sounds like it was only people from that Saligi building. No, it's what, that was just the building that kept coming up because that's where, yeah. the, where the suicides were. So happening. it just goes to, my point here is that, you know, every generation, you know, there are people obviously who may not be able to cope with uh, with with anxiety and and, and stress mm-hmm. you know there will always be people like that la, you know and and these people have to see you know uh, someone for help I, I just think that this generation has more stress than our generation did yeah uh, uh, but still your generation is jumping out of buildings though <laughs> no, Hola, that was in the sixties. <laughs> nah, he yeah, brought it up. He out. brought it up. No, it's like, it's not that everybody jumped out of a building, Glenn. I'm just saying yeah. we okay. did. We did hang have on, exams. Hang on, let me jump in here, okay. right? Because I'm gonna stand up for the mummies who have lost their children to suicide. Yeah. Okay? yeah. And there's the Please Stay movement, which I'm very blessed to be. You know, working alongside them. Uh, but they they don't want to be in this movement because all of them have lost their children. Mm. So it's no matter what uh, generation, no matter what age, Mm. uh, people do feel that they are pushed to a corner such that they have nowhere to turn, whether it's a disorder or whether they see no way out. And it is very very painful for the parents. So I think... As far as possible, what we want to do is to try and help each and every one. Mm. And I think, you know, I, I love the way FD stands up for the parents and, you know, to, to, to ask about the parents and say, okay, so what can we do? What are the signs that we can look out for? Because that is very important. Right. Mm-hmm. I, didn't hear, I didn't hear him do all that. Well, See, but, but, that's okay. because you're not listening to me. But never mind. Here's Donna Lewis <laughs> with I Love You Always Forever on 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. 
because actually my point was that you know it's not the parents fault like whatever happens right it's not the parents fault because chances are you know there was already something going on in 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 the mind of 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 their kids you see you know what i yeah. mean their kids no. were were not necessarily normal in 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 that sense but there are a lot of parents who are who are what do you call hurting and they are blaming they blame themselves. themselves it's not it's so, not so that's fault. what i'm saying you know i mean you shouldn't it's blame not. yourself right i hear you uh glenn there's mm. uh andrea co from facebook live saying that uh um furthermore there was social media and their cyberbullying right now mm. hence you know all these uh issues that are actually coming out like True. you just mentioned yeah. we we never had the pressure of social media that kids yeah. have today yeah. which, which is why is do you understand true. where i'm coming from now? so when i mentioned earlier yeah. on that we were young and we were free it was to set up you know something so that you know the the kids of today yeah we can say mm. they are under a little bit more pressure but when you yeah. mentioned that during your time even people were jumping out of the saligi building then all of a sudden i didn't know what to say <laughs> Right. No, but I, I did what I what I was trying to point out is kid, kids kids have had anxiety problems for yeah. the longest time, and mm. we we need to be thankful that today we have the likes of Jerry with us who can actually help these kids because in my day uh, we didn't, or at yeah. least I didn't know of them, you yeah. know. So with all the pressures that kids are under today, they need help, um, and 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 the help comes from many places. It comes from people like Jerry. It comes from family. It comes from friends. It comes from everybody. It's also, I mean, a period where you know you could say it's the survival of the fittest. What can mm. parents do to strengthen, uh, you know, the uh, the kids, or rather, to to make their kids more resilient mentally, Jerry? Or, or Jerry, how can you actually recognize those triggers? You know, if you look at your boy or your girl. <laughs> Two different questions, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, question one. Who wants to go? Glenn, Glenn's <laughs> question go first. Glenn's question. Glenn. You need what to read. You know, or, or triggers? Okay, maybe triggers. Okay, yeah, triggers, triggers first. Okay. Yeah, on on that, it's a nicer <laughs> flow. So triggers can be the different stressors, stressors like uh, mummy and daddy's expectations. Okay, the school's expectations, the friends that they hang out with, and everyone scoring the nineties. You know, uh, ninety percent, ninety percent. Um, the the uh, stresses like uh, I don't have time. I'm overwhelmed by all the work. You know, and um, th these may be their triggers. They these may be their stressors. Yeah, mm -hmm. they might be ill, and sometimes I hear children not being able to go for like two three weeks. After that, the anxiety skyrockets because they tell you, I cannot catch up anymore. So they panic. Mm. Yeah. So they are very, very worried about that. So that can also be a huge stressor, which takes a couple of months to kind of uh, build back their confidence. Mm. Mm. And so how, how, how can we make the kids uh, more resilient then? Because I mean, if I had a kid, I would send my kid to you. And then as a psychologist, you know, I want you to drum it into the guy's head. Or my girl's no, hair no, no, no. that they that's, are absolutely invincible. That's, that's not how you. And, uh, that's not how you deal with a psych psychologist. You oh, don't tell them what to do. I see. Yeah. They are there to help you. I'll just time. recommend. I'll yeah, just recommend yeah. that my psychologist uh, continue but, to drum it in my kid's head that he is invincible and he can <laughs> do anything. Sorry, Jerry. Uh, aside from students, or uh, also for um, uh, people going to a new job, or, or even meeting your partners. Mm. parents or whatever there's also anxiety involved in that am i right to say that sure there's a natural anxiety it keeps you on your toes so that you know you don't do the wrong thing yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so the, a little bit of anxiety is good you know but i i think let's not fear the fear mm. because that that brings on even more uh weight on your chest An anxiety and pressure are two different things altogether right jerry Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, I I believe I believe pressure pressure is good, you know. Sometimes, especially in 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 the work environment, a little bit of pressure, yeah. you know, because it takes your mind off like the more trivial things, mm. you know, uh, makes you feel alive. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Know? Yeah. 
But but I, I do want to go back to what Glenn said, which I think has not been answered yet. Mm. How do we build resilience in our children? Mm. Do you have any advice for the parents? You have you have used the word built. So it's a very small step-by-step -step process. So building foundations, doing it step-by-step. -step. So today we're talking about the motivation, mm. right? So I'm mm. going to tie in with that also, you know, um, what is motivation to, to have a destination, to have a direction. So if I have a direction, you know, then I will work towards the direction, okay? But in anxiety, the direction is too far away and fraught with a lot of worries. So what do I do? I bring the worries, uh, I bring the worries, I bring the direction, the destination a little bit closer. I break it up. So I have tinier goals so that I can achieve them and I can sustain my energy for longer right. so that I can win that so easily. Yeah. Mm. Okay. What about martial arts? I think martial arts, uh, you know, can be very useful. Mm. Like if I had kids, I would make sure that they take up, let's say, Muay Thai maybe at the age of five. I, I think some martial arts can be very th therapeutic. Am I right, Jerry? Yep. So the concept of martial arts is also building on foundation. You don't suddenly become, you know, black belt overnight. Yeah. You actually build on foundation and you do it slowly. Right. Mm. But some martial arts are useless. La. I don't want to mention which martial arts. I think, <laughs> you know, just go for something like Muay Thai. You mean once the, you uh, can kick people eh, in that no, way, no, no, you no. push push kick people away. No, you know? no. <laughs> like, you know, just... No, no that's not what we're here to away. teach our children. And, uh, yeah. Push kick you away. Eh. No, we're not here to nah, teach I'm not, our I'm not hurting this. you as well. I'm just pushing you. <laughs> Jerry, help. <laughs> Oh dear! Ayoo, this is all oh, he wants to teach his children. Good. Glenn, that, Glenn, that's anger not issues, not nah, Glenn. No, 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 no. Topic. No, you see, uh, because if you have like karate and and take one around, you're like, ah, right. Yeah. But you see, Muay Thai, <laughs> you can you can just push kick someone away, like ah, just get away from me, like a horse. <laughs> oh dear! You know what I mean. Can we, can we cyber bully you like on yes. TV, like somebody that is in the audience now on Facebook Live? Just take your your screen grab and do a gif. Or a <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that, someone is going best. to do that. I'm okay, sure okay. someone yeah. is going to do that. Okay, go. Oh, I see. <laughs> 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 so what what parents so what we're saying is to build resilience parents have to understand that it is a it is a it is a it is a slow long journey mm. is that is that what we're saying yes it is a slow it doesn't have to be long but it has to be small a lot of people try and jump the gun so mm. we try not to do that mm. yeah yeah so one of the concept is the kaizen concept is a japanese technique mm. and it is one minute so uh some of my my patients or some of my clients are quite amused when i say just do one minute of you know uh stretching or one minute of exercise and they go like one minute and say yeah the whole idea is to have you succeed because your fear sometimes is of failure right so mm. we want to succeed so we do it step by step and we build on it. So cannot cheat. We do one week, one minute. And then the next week, you can increase. Okay, hmm. we can bring that up again on air. Now we do yes, the traffic stand first. Yes, Alrighty, usual delays across <laughs> the expressways. That is for sure. Uh, we're trying to check and see if we've got anything else that may come in your way as you head off to work this morning. Uh, stationary vehicle, PIE towards Changi stationary vehicle uh, before, but at North Avenue 3. SLE towards the BKE vehicle broken down after Lentor Avenue. Um, also, the SLE towards the BKE a vehicle broken down before the BKE exit. CTE towards the AYE an accident before the PIE Changi exit. PIE towards Tuas, an accident after Jurong East Avenue 2. Also on the PIE towards Tuas, an accident before Jalan Baha, congestion is to Jurong Town Hall Road. On the AYE towards Tuas, an accident after Jurong Port Road, congestion is to Clemente Avenue 6. Be safe as you drive today. <laughs>
<laughs> Good morning, Singapore. It's Glenn and the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> what happened? I went, be safe as you drive today. Jerry cracked up. <laughs> Jerry is so amazed when you suddenly, at the end, you suddenly just give a big smile. I know, I know, I know. But remember, he's going to be redundant. Oh, the stop moment, it! The moment we have our new in vehicle unit. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure, sure then, sure. then, stop yeah. jelly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, October is Mental Health Awareness Month, and uh, which is why we're talking about everything uh, related to anxiety. Anxiety. Um, and we also determined and found out early on that panic attacks and anxiety attacks are different. different. So, uh, but I, I want to ask you this, Jerry. Which one is more serious, a panic attack or an anxiety attack? Which one causes breathlessness? Both have breathlessness. So, oh. the, the symptoms are very similar. But panic attack goes into the big book of disorders. Uh, and it doesn't quite, it's quite random. It doesn't have a direct trigger. So it can occur anytime and it's quite dangerous. So you have people driving and suddenly they feel as if they, 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 they feel symptoms of a heart attack. Mm. So they can't breathe and they literally have to stop on the side of the road. Wow. Right? Yeah. Just to recover and it might take some time. There's no trigger, there's no nothing um, you know, surrounding what might have caused the attack, right? Anxiety attack is slightly different, so that, that doesn't go into the books, but it is something that is also very real. So they also have their palpitation, they have their uh, difficulty to breathe, um, they have all the signs and symptoms similar to panic attack, but it can be caused by them ruminating and worrying about a stressor. Mm. Typically, the anxiety attack goes away after the stressors are settled. Right. So mm. if they are panicking over a presentation, after the presentation, they are fine and dandy. You know, after the exams, they, they, they would be okay. Right. Yeah. Mm. Last year, I had one, one panic right. attack last year. No. Mm. Have you ever had panic attacks before? Anxiety attacks? I've had anxiety, but not panic. Well, I mean, to me, it's the same thing. You know, like shortness of breath, and all of a sudden, you feel like like you are getting a, you are coming down with a heart attack. Mm. Mm. So, so the right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, you sit down, and and I think you know, it just uh, uh, you 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 somehow these things are playing on your mind. You sit down, right? You 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 feel like you can't. You can't breathe properly all of a sudden, right? This mm. was last year, mm. Mm. and then and then your mind starts to to play tricks on you, right? Uh, you're not well. You're gonna get a heart attack, and then, you know, it 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 feels like you are mm. about mm. to get a heart attack because your heart is beating even faster. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I, so yeah. I got I got Jean to drive me down to to uh, you know my cardiologist who might go through uh, go to for my yearly checkups mm. and all that. Mm. And I remember mm. opening the door and going, everybody, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and then the receptionist looked at me and she laughed. She said, I don't think you're having a heart attack. But would you like an ECG? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Let's do an ECG now. It's so, the same. Uh, we, it's the same. We did so the ECG the and everything was fine as well. So Sorry. I realized that I, I, I wasn't having a heart attack. Yeah, I, I have to I have to tell you, you know, whenever I before I even come on air with uh, Glenn FD and Sean, you know, I have butterflies in my tummy as well. Till today, you know, even if I go out there and host a, a gig or anything like that, I still experience those butterflies in the tummy. I don't know about you guys. Well, let me let me let me, let me give you a bit of advice on that, Ivan. Those butterflies are the mm. best thing you could ever have. Mm. Because it keeps you within your guidelines. Yep. <laughs> no, it's true. It's, true. it's yeah. true. As an entertainer, don't ever lose the butterflies. I will tell you that even the greatest of entertainers, Elton John, Rod Stewart, all these people, they still get butterflies in their stomach before they go on stage. Mm. Known fact. It's, um, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's play a song from Annie Lennox right now. Here's Love Song for a Vampire on 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. 
And then you guys didn't ask me why. Why I had the anxiety attack. What what caused the anxiety attack? What was on my mind? You guys didn't ask me that. Oh, working with... Uh, okay, Glenn. What was on your mind that caused the anxiety attack? Because I was thinking, uh, this was um, you know almost the end of the uh, EPL season. Mm. I was thinking to myself, oh my God, Liverpool are really going to win the title this year. <laughs> uh, then I panicked. Right. Yeah. But in the end they won. So now I'm I'm okay. Yeah, okay. I'm fearless uh, now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What 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 that was the treble time or what? No, because you no. know like Liverpool they are our closest rivals, right? We won twenty titles. They were on eighteen. Yeah. So now they are on okay. nineteen. So I think this year maybe I'm gonna have another anxiety anxiety attack. <laughs> So I don't want them to also win 20 titles, you see. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, it's a, it's, as a Manchester United fan, I always want to be ahead of, of Liverpool. Yeah, it's this big fight that we have going on. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, Jerry, I, I go back to that Kaizen system you said. So it's simple. It's simple. Break it down into one minute segments. Yep. Just yep. to say, I have achieved this. Correct. I can do it. I have hmm. achieved it. So the behavior and the cognition is very consistent, is very congruent. And you give yourself that taste of success, hmm. you know, and then tomorrow you try it again and you do it and say, hey, I can do it. Hmm. Yay. And then you try it again the next day. So you keep building on that. You see, you give hmm. yourself confidence because one of the things that um, you know, when you have all these disorders, anxiety disorder, depression, your mm. your confidence level is yeah. beaten down. Right, right. And that's the beginning of the end when that's ha- when that happens. <laughs> that's I like guess. that's when you need to see uh, Jerry and go like Jerry. Okay, uh, I want you to. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, you cannot tell her what to do. Yes. But you know, I I want to. <laughs> You know, I want to feel good again. I want to I want to regain my confidence. You know, they say swimming is good for uh, um, all these anxiety disorders and all yeah. the alphabetical terms that you want to call someone. Uh, swimming mm-hmm. is good, right? So swimming, walking, um, leisure, biking, mm-hmm. things that engage both sides of your body, movement, <clears throat> movements that are repetitive, you yeah. know, are very soothing, very calming for the body and for the mind. So um, exercising for mental health, you you need, you know, movements that engage both sides of the body. Okay, so I'm, think, I'm thinking then today, because I want to engage my mind, I will get two cans of beer, one yeah. in each hand, and then lift them <laughs> alternatively, so I'm using both sides of my body. Oh, no! <laughs> and all but four stomachs. Then- that 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 introduces chemicals that might be stimulating for the body and that creates more tension. Then I cannot help you, yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I think I think boxing is good. If you don't like the push kicks and all that and Muay Thai is He's too much, violent. then boxing. He's boxing is good. And anyway, I'm wearing my Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay shirt. Ooh. Yeah. Very violent. <laughs> yeah. He is the greatest. What well, well, the back says, I am? Glenn is the greatest, he says that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You can go and find the ring. La. <laughs> but actually, uh, I mean, do your kids take up uh, martial arts, Ivan? No, not at all. How come? Uh, they do a lot of sports. Uh, we do a lot of cycling, we do a lot of running, mm. we do a lot of you know rugby. Is it because uh, you guys are against violence? Because there are some parents who, who don't want their kids to take up martial arts because, I mean, they believe that it's... You know, I mean, it can be. It can. It can lead to. It can, it can lead, lead to, to violence. To, yeah. 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 No, I won't I, say I mean, it will. I I will say self defense is great. You mm. know, go out there, learn self defense. But if it's not for you, it's not for you. Some some yeah. kids just don't. Uh, they're like nah. They just don't want it. So he tried it. Then after yeah. a while, you know, then like what Jerry mentioned, exams came in the picture, and then all your schedules get turned around. So I think it's sometimes all about scheduling. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, so it's not so, so because if you want to go and play a game or ride a bicycle, you don't need to worry anytime, any day. You can just do it. So I think it's all about scheduling sometimes. Right. But you know, uh, the, the thing about, uh, about like martial arts and stuff like that, if you mm. just take martial arts like that and you don't get hit, yep. you know, like in your face and all that, I think it's useless. Mm. You must get hit in your face. You must experience the pain and then you'll become fearless. Yep. You get what I mean? Yep. 
I do. Because I if do. you're always giving and you're just sparring and you're not receiving and stuff like that, right? And that's the reason uh, why you know you 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 will stay the same. But the moment you get punched in your face or whatever, right? And you know that feeling, uh, then you'll yeah. be fearless. Yeah, you look at Jerry. <laughs> but you know lah. No, yeah, right. I, I, because you see, this is her, no, but this is where Glenn and I are completely different. I, my my take is is life's too short. No, that's why you that's see. Why. I mean, that's why people are scared of things. You know why? Because they've never been punched. I mean, okay, they've never they've never experienced pain, right? I mean, in life, there are some people who have experienced pain in other areas. Yes. Okay, yes, but yes. what I mean is, when you are a fighter, if you are if you claim to be a fighter, yeah. and you have not taken a punch or felt a punch or whatever, then yeah. you cannot consider yourself a fighter because yeah. the moment you experience that one day, boom, you're out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do know. So, um, yeah, I don't. I think Jerry uh, doesn't advocate violence, right, Jerry? I don't like violence, but I understand what Glenn is talking about. Like, if a fighter, you know, is a fighter, the least understand how to block a punch. You need to understand. You know, where the the pain is going to land on, so then yeah. you can learn. Yeah. So that. Uh, that one I agree. Like mm. if, to ride a bike, I need to fall so that I can balance better. Mm. So that concept I understand. But fighting itself, mm, or fighting to be fearless, I don't think so. Mm. I would rather advocate for like Lady Gaga. Like please go go rock, rock climb. climb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is scary. Yeah. So the yeah rock, those those that fear heights should go mm. and try rock climbing. Sometimes I end up like a lizard on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit, but that that'll be quite hard, lah, for someone who fears heights, uh, for yeah. them to actually climb. Uh, yeah. But they, but but this is how my father overcame his fear of heights. Yeah, yeah. Rock climbing? Uh, no, um, he <laughs> yes. uh, he overcame it by playing Santa Claus. Uh, let me tell you the what? story. My father couldn't go three floors up and look o- look out a window. Okay. So mm-hmm. one day, we, this was when we were in Penang. I was very young. Um, mm-hmm. He was asked to play Santa Claus at a Christmas party. And no one told him that Santa Claus was going to be brought in on a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so they put him in a helicopter and they brought him in and they lowered him from a harness. He was about 300 feet in the air. Wow. How extreme oh. is that? And he, he, that, that one instance, and he lost his fear fight. <laughs> yeah. It's one, true, it's true, it's true. One instance, man. Hey, that's that radical, a, right? I mean, which year was this? Which year was this? Oh, this was 19, oh. wait, 60, yeah. Yeah, I would have been in the mid 60s. You see, mid 60s, and the father is coming, <laughs> coming in. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 1FM 91.3, it's Glenn and the Flying Dutchman. We were just talking about uh, um, a story. Yeah, my dad. Yeah, his dad. Being lowered out of a helicopter on a harness. Being afraid of of heights. And then overcame his fear of heights after he was lowered. From a helicopter. From a helicopter 300 feet up in the air, air. right? And I'm saying in the 60s, his father was in a helicopter. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah, my family has done some pretty damn weird stuff. <laughs> okay, anyway. maybe that's why I am the way I am. I don't know. So you're the flying Dutchman. <laughs> yes, yeah. could be. Got, took it, took it from my dad. Took it from my dad. Okay, so we've got Dr. Geraldine Tan from the therapy room with us. Uh, very, very interesting morning. Uh, yes, talking about um, uh, different forms of uh, mental health because it is Mental Health Awareness Month uh, being the month of October. October. All right, Jerry, uh, we've, well, we've kind of run out of time. Any last words? Yes. So, quote, another quote, success is the sum of small efforts by Robert Collier. Okay. Thank you so much, Jerry, for joining us. No worries. And the next time someone else does that, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Jerry.